All right, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to give this talk. Um, my name is Cindy Kai and I am a, an ophthalmologist and a retina specialist at Johns Hopkins. So I'm representing the US in today's series of talks. And I just wanna start off by saying that eye health is really important. Almost 600 million patients around the world have some form of vision impairment when, when they're, they, they don't see well. And you can imagine not being able to see well can affect your quality of life and it causes people to lose their independence and mobility, and certainly it's really hard to work when you have vision impairment. And when you look at the leading causes of vision impairment and blindness around the world, a lot of these are retina conditions that I treat. So for example, um, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic macular edema, or age-related macular degeneration and vein inclusion in combination affect hundreds of millions of patients around the world. And in each of these conditions, they involve these leaky blood vessels that leak either fluid or blood into the retina. And when there's fluid or blood in the retina, then the retina doesn't function well and that impacts the vision. The great news is that we have great treatments and can reverse vision loss from all of these conditions, basically. And the treatment involves a class of medications called antivascular endothelial growth factor medications or anti-VEGF. And these are the three commonly used ones, bevacizumab, aflibercept, and ranibizumab. Um, and because of the blood-brain barrier, we have to deliver these medications directly into the eye by injecting the medications into the vitreous cavity or intravitreally. And typically, we give this on a monthly basis until the disease is quiet and adequately treated. And so the, this procedure and medication combination is among the most commonly um, given um, procedure and medication around the world. And in general, the intravitreal anti-VEGF anti medications are pretty well tolerated. However, we do know that anti-VEGF medications can adversely affect kidney function. And when given systemically, it can cause anything in between acute kidney injury all the way to the very severe kidney failure. And when we give these medications intravitreally or inside the eye, there is still some degree of systemic absorption, obviously a lot less than we were if we were giving it systemically, but you can detect the medication in the serum and it causes a decrease in the plasma concentration of free VEGF. And depending on uh, the systemic absorption is different depending on which medication we give. Um, it's the greatest with the flabercept and bevacizumab and the least with ranibizumab. And this distinction is important for our proposed Odyssey study. Um, so it's important to study the link between intravitreal anti-VEGF medications and kidney failure, because as retina specialists, we all have that one patient that we remember that we gave this intravitreal anti-VEGF to who ends up hospitalized because of acute kidney injury, and that sends them down this downward spiral of kidney failure and eventually needing dialysis. And the literature is filled with case reports like this. And I see this is a devastating outcome, not just for the patient, but also the treating ophthalmologist. And so kidney failure or end-stage kidney disease is a very end-stage uh, manifestation, very severe phenotype of needing a transplant or needing dialysis, and it's increasing in prevalence, it's very costly for society, and it's deadly for our patients. And so inter the, in the link between intravitreal anti-VEGF and kidney failure has thus far not been very well studied. Um, in the context of these clinical trials that have looked at these medications, kidney failure is often lumped under serious adverse events and it's not reported as a separate outcome. And existing studies have largely focused on kidney failure, uh, kid, sorry, kidney function rather than the more severe kidney failure. And that's because kidney failure takes a long time and requires a much longer follow-up than our typical clinical trial in retina, which is um, only about one to two years. And even the largest study that has looked at this link um, has only about 600 patients, which is much smaller than any average Odyssey Network study. Which leads us to our proposed Odyssey Network study, which we are framing as a comparative safety study. So we are proposing to estimate the comparative risk of kidney failure among patients with blinding diseases, comparing ranibizumab to aflibercept bevacizumab to aflibercept, and bevacizumab to ranibizumab. 
And our hypothesis is that in these pairwise comparisons, we'll see the lowest risk of kidney failure in patients who are exposed to ranibizumab as opposed to the other one. Remember, ranibizumab is the one with the least systemic absorption. And knowing this risk of kidney failure from our intravitreal anti-VEGF medication is so important. If we find a difference between the medications, then I as a retina specialist can offer more personalized treatment and offer patients the medication that's not going to precipitate kidney failure. And obviously that would reduce the morbidity and mortality from kidney failure and reduce the cost from society. And even if there is no difference between these medications, and this is a negative study, I would argue that this is still a very important negative study. And the Odyssey Network is probably the best and ro most robust way of directly evaluating this question. Um, so we're hoping everyone can contribute. We've um, created the concept sets and va verified and validated them locally at Hopkins. So not surprisingly, um, most instances of anti-VEGF medications are associated with this procedure code because they're being given by ophthalmologists in an outpatient setting. And of the patients who receive at least one intravitreal anti-VEGF medications, they end up getting at least three monthly medications, meaning that they're getting repeat treatments. And so we're, we love to get new data partners. You really don't need any special data elements for this project, just ICD codes, CPT codes, and medications. So anybody with administrative claims data or electronic health record data that's associated with an ophthalmology department can help. All right, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you pick this project.